Good day, grade 10s. In this last lesson in week one of algebraic expression, we're going to be learning about multiplying monomials, binomials, and trinomials. Now remember, a monomial is just a mathematical expression with one variable, binomials, two variables, and trinomials, three. So obviously, poly means three or more. Right, so let's look at this little video and see how we do it. Multiply negative 4x squared by the whole expression 3x squared plus 25x minus 7. So if you multiply anything times a whole expression, you really just use the distributive property to multiply each term of the expression by the negative 4x squared. So we're going to have to distribute this negative 4x squared over every term in the expression. So first we can start with negative 4x squared times 3x squared. So we can write that we're going to have negative 4x squared times 3x squared. And to that, we're going to add negative 4x squared times 25x times 25x. And to that, we're going to add negative 4x squared times negative 7 times negative 7. So let's just simplify this a little bit. Now, we can obviously swap the order. We're just multiplying negative 4 times x squared times 3 times x squared. And actually, I'll do out every step. Eventually, you can do some of this in your head. This is the exact same thing as negative 4 times 3 times x squared times x squared. And what is that equal to? Well, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And x squared times x squared, same base, we're taking the product. That's going to be x to the fourth. So this right here is negative 12x to the fourth. Now let's think about this term over here. This term over here. This is the same thing as, and of course we have this plus out here. We have this plus. And then this part right here is the exact same thing as 25, 25 times negative 4 times x squared times x. So let's just multiply the numbers out here. These were the coefficients. 25 times negative 4 is negative 100. So it'll be plus negative 100, or we could just say it's minus 100. And then we have x squared times x, or x squared times x to the first power. Same base. We can add the exponents. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this is negative 100 x to the third power. And then let's look at this last term over here. We have negative 4x squared. So this is going to be plus. That's this plus right over here. We have, we have negative 4. We can multiply that times negative 7. And then multiply that times x squared. I'm just changing the order in which we multiply it. So negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28. Positive 28. And then I'm going to multiply that times the x squared times the x squared. And there's no simplification to do, no like terms. These are different powers of x. So we are done. Right, now let's see if we can do an example together. I'm just going to get a pen out. Right, so you'll see that this looks a little bit diff different because I haven't just kept to the x's. Um, there are some y's here as well, but the principle is exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 2x and we're going to multiply it with each of the variables in this expression. So we're going to go 2x times by our 3x plus 2x times by minus 2xy plus 2x times by our 4y, right? So you can see we've multiplied 2x by 3x, first term, 2x times by minus 2xy, and then 2x times by 4y. So let's go through it. 2 times 3 is 6. And x times x, what do we do when we multiply? We add the indices, so it becomes x squared. A plus times a plus times a minus is a minus. 2 times 2 is 4. And then it becomes x squared y. And then we've got plus 2 times 4 is 8. And in this case, it's x, y. And again, we don't have any like terms, so no simplification. Now let's look at this. Now this looks very scary, but it's not actually. We just have to take it baby steps. So let's start at the beginning. So again, and this time, because this is actually revision of grade 9 work, I'm not going to write it out yet like this, where we're going to go 2x, some of our 3x. I'm going to just do it in our heads. We can do this. Um, 
you should be practicing that. If you do need to write it out like this, that's fine, it's not a problem. But in the end, it would be better if you could graduate to being able to do it like I'm about to do it. So x times x squared gives us x cubed. x times minus 2xy becomes minus 2x squared y because it's just the x's that are being increased plus x times 3y squared becomes 3xy squared. You have to be very careful about this minus here, so please remember it. So it becomes minus 2x squared y. A minus times a minus is a plus. 2 times 2 is 4. And then y times xy is xy squared. And then finally, a minus times a plus is a minus. 2 times 3 is 6, and it becomes 6y cubed. Right, and now we just need to simplify and add our like terms. We can see that we've got an x squared here, and we've got an x squared here, and we've got an xy squared, and an xy squared. So it becomes x cubed minus 2x squared y, minus 2x squared y becomes minus 4x squared y, plus 3xy squared, plus 4xy squared becomes plus 7 xy squared and then it's just minus 6y cubed. Right, now let's look at how to multiply two binomials. And I'm just going to change that back to an arrow. Multiply 3x plus 2 times 5x minus 7. So we're multiplying two binomials. And I'm actually going to show you two really equivalent ways of doing this. One that uh, you might hear in a classroom, and it's kind of a more of a mechanical memorizing way of doing it, which might be faster, but you really don't know what you're doing. And then there's the one where you're essentially just applying something that you already know in kind of a logical way. So I'll, I'll first do the memorizing way that you might be exposed to. And they'll, they'll use something called FOIL. FOIL, so let me write this down here, FOIL. So you could immediately see that whenever someone gives you a mnemonic to memorize, that you're doing something pretty mechanical. So FOIL literally stands for first, first outside, let me write it this way, let me write FOIL, FOIL, where F, the F in FOIL stands for first, the O in FOIL stands for outside, the I stands for inside, and then the L stands for last. And the reason why I don't like these things is when you're 35 years old, you're not going to remember what FOIL stood for, and then you're not going to remember how to multiply this binomial. But let's just apply FOIL. So first says, just multiply the first terms in each of these binomials. So just multiply the 3x times the 5x. So 3x times the 5x. The outside part tells us multiply the outside term. So in this case, we have 3x on the outside, and you have negative 7 on the outside. So that is plus 3x times negative 7. The inside, the inside. Well, the inside terms here are 2 and 5x. So plus 2 times 5x. And then finally, you have the last terms you have the 2 and the negative 7. So the last term is 2 times negative 7. 2 times negative 7. So what you're essentially doing is just making sure that you're multiplying each term by every other term here. We're, what we're essentially doing is multiplying the, doing the distributive property twice. We're multiplying the 3x times 5x minus 7. So 3x times 5x minus 7 is 3x times 5x plus 3x minus 7. And we're multiplying the 2 times 5x minus 7 to give us these terms. But anyway, let's just multiply this out just to get our answer. 3x times 5x, the same thing as 3 times 5 times x times x, which is the same thing as 15 x squared. You can use x to the first times x to the first. So you multiply the x's, you get x squared. 3 times 5 is 15. This term right here, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. And then you have your x right over here. And then you have this term, which is 2 times 5, which is 10 times x, so plus 10x. And then finally, you have this term here in blue, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And we aren't done yet. We can simplify this a little bit. We have two like terms here. We have this, let me find a new color. We have two 
terms with a x to the first power, or just an x term right over here. So if you have negative 21 of something and you add 10, or another way, if you have 10 of something and you subtract 21 of them, you're going to have negative 11 of that something. And we put the other terms here. You have 15, 15 x squared, and then you have your minus 14. And we are done. Now, I said I would show you another way to do it. So I want to show you why the distributive property can get us here without having to memorize FOIL. So the distributive property tells us that if we're, look, if we're multiplying something times an expression, you just have to multiply it times every term in the expression. So we can distribute, we can distribute the 5x onto the 3, or actually, we can, well, let me do it this way. We could distribute the 5x minus 7, this whole thing, onto the 3x plus 2. Let's, let me just change the order, since we're used to distributing something from the left. So this is the same thing as 5x minus 7 times 3x plus 2. I just swapped the two expressions. And we can distribute this whole thing times each of these terms. Now, what happens if I take 5x minus 7 times 3x? Well, that's just going to be 3x times 5x minus 7. So I've just, just distributed the 5x minus 7 times 3x. And to that, I'm going to add 2 times 5x minus 7. I've just distributed the 5x minus 7 onto the 2. Now, if you, now we can do the distributive property again. We can distribute the 3x onto the 5x. We can distribute the 3x onto the 5x. And we can distribute the 3x onto the negative 7. We can distribute the 2 onto the 5x over here. And we can distribute the 2 on that negative 7. On that negative 7. Now, if we do it like this, what do we get? 3x times 5x. That's this right over here. If we do 3x times negative 7, that's this term right over here. If you do 2 times 5x, that's this term right over here. If you do 2 times negative 7, that is this term right over here. So we got the exact same result that we got with FOIL. Now, FOIL can be faster if you just want to do it. You kind of can skip to the step. I, I, I think it's important that you know that this is how it actually works, just in case you do forget this when you're 35 or 45 years old and you're faced with multiplying binomial. You just have to remember the distributive property. Right, now let's do a couple of our own examples. Um, now the way that I do it is actually using FOIL, but I don't think of it as using FOIL for the simple reason that I'm using the distributive law. So what we do is, and the way that you're taught in school, is that we multiply this every variable in the first bracket with every variable in the next bracket. So in this case we're multiplying x with x, so we're going to go x multiplied with x, then we're going to go plus, and then we're going to take that same x multiplied with the next variable in the next bracket. So it's going to be x times by the negative 3. Plus, now we're going to, now we finish multiplying this x with everything in that bracket. We're now going to multiply this next variable with the, every variable in the next bracket. So we go multiply 2 times by x. And then finally, in this case, it's going to be 2 times by negative 3. Now, if you look at this carefully, you can see that because we're multiplying two binomials, it actually works out that we are actually using FOIL. Because I've done the first with the first, that's first. I've done x with minus 3, which is your outers. 2 with times by x, which is your inners and then your last, okay. So in this case, even though I've used a distributive law in the sense that I've taken your x and multiplied with every one of these, I have effectively used FOIL. So you can see that FOIL is just really a little mnemonic to help you remember how to do it. But I agree with the gentleman in the video, it is better for you to understand what you're doing. So x times x is x squared. Then we got minus 3x plus 2x minus 6. We have got two like terms, so we need to simplify. So it becomes x squared minus x minus 6. Right, let's do another example. In this case, we're going to do it 
exactly the same way but I'm going to treat you a little bit more maturely because again this is revision of grade 9 work and we're not going to write it out like we did in the first we're just going to go straight to the second line so 4x times by 2x is 8x squared that's first for the first then the next lot is going to be plus 8x then we've finished with that 4x now we move on to the next variable so it becomes plus 6x and then finally plus 6 and the reason I like this method is it doesn't matter how many variables you have in the first bracket and how many in the second if you just go and multiply the first variable with all the variables in the second bracket and then the second variable with all the variables and so on and so on you will eventually get the whole answer out and then let's just simplify this we can see we've got two like variables so we've got eight like terms so we've got 8x squared plus 14x plus 6. Right, now let's look at multiplying polynomials and I need to change this back to an arrow so I can click on the link. Multiply 5a minus 2 times 4a squared plus 3a minus 1. So here we're multiplying a binomial by a trinomial. So the, the FOIL tool will not work here. It would only work if you were multiplying a binomial times another binomial. So here we really have to rely on the distributive property. What we can do is we can distribute we can distribute this entire trinomial onto the binomial. So we can multiply 4a squared plus 3a minus 1 times 5a and then multiply 4a squared plus 3a minus 1 times negative times negative 2. So that would give us so that would give us, let me do it this way, it would be 5a, 5a times 4a squared plus 3a minus 1. And then we would have a negative 2 or plus negative 2, which is the same thing as, let me just write it this way, plus, plus negative 2, plus negative 2 times 4a squared plus 3a minus 1. I've just distributed this onto each term over here. You see the 5a minus 2. Each term is now being multiplied by this entire thing. And now we can distribute the 5a onto this term. So we have 5a times 4a squared. So we can multiply the 5 times the 4. We get 20. a times a squared. a to the first times a squared is a to the third power. Then we do 5a times 3a. 5 times 3 is 15. a times a is a squared. And then finally you have 5a times negative 1. Well, that's just going to be negative 5a. Now we do this part. Plus negative 2 times 4a squared. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8a squared. Negative, so we just did that, negative 2 times 3a. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6a. And then finally, you have negative 2 times negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1. Well, negative times a negative is a positive. So that is positive, positive 2. And now we can combine like terms. We only have one third degree term over here. We only have the 20a to the third. So let's just write that down, 20a to the third. And then let's look, let's look at our a squared terms. We have a 15a squared term right over here. And we have another negative 8a squared. So if I have 15 of something and I subtract 8, if I subtract 8 from that, then I have 7 of that something left. So 15 minus 8 is 7a squared. And then we have, let me do a new color here, we have a negative 5a. And to that, we're going to add a negative 6a. So we're already negative 5. We're going to go another negative 6. We're going to become 6 more negative. So that is negative 11a. And then finally, we have this constant out here, this plus 2. Now, I'll show you another way to get this exact same answer. We are done. We have simplified. We've combined all our like terms. Another way to do this, which is essentially just doing the distributive property twice, but it's essentially more analogous to how we actually multiply numbers. So if we do it like this, we can actually take this expression up here, 4a squared plus 3a minus 1, and then multiply it by this second expression right over here, so times and I'll write it in the same places. When I talk about places here, I'm not talking about powers of 10. I'm talking about powers of a. So this is in the first power of a space. So 5a, see we have first powers of a in this space, minus 2. This is 0th power of a. This is the e, a to the 0th power space instead of the 1's place. This is the a to the first 
power instead of the tens place, and this is a to the squared power place instead of the hundreds place, which is completely analogous to what you do when you learn to multiply numbers in the first or second grade. So let's multiply these. So first let's go, let's multiply negative two times this entire thing. Remember, we're just essentially doing the distributive property. When I multiply negative two times this entire thing, I'm doing this step right over here. So negative two times negative one, negative two times negative one is positive two. And once again, there's no a there, so I'm going to write in the a to zero space, or the ones place. So it's going to be positive two. Negative two times three a, well that is negative six a, and it's going to be in the a place, negative six a, a to the first power place. And then negative two times four a squared, well that's just going to be negative eight a squared. Negative eight a squared. So this is negative two being multiplied by all of that, it gives me this. And then when I take and then when I take my 5a and I multiply it by negative 1, that's negative 5a. And so it goes into the a place, so negative 5a. It goes under a like term. Then 5a times 3a, 5 times 3 is 15. a times a is a squared, so it goes under the other a squared, so it's 15a squared. And then finally, 5a times 4a squared, 5 times 4 is 20. a times a squared is a to the third, so you have 20 a to the third. And now you can just add it all up. You can just add it all up. And we get two plus nothing is two. Negative six a minus five a. Well, that's just negative eleven a. We still have this plus two here. Negative eight a squared plus fifteen a squared. Well, that's going to be seven a squared. So plus seven a squared. And then you're adding this to nothing, so you have twenty a to the third, and we got the exact same answer because we really just did the same exact thing, we just wrote it in a different way. Right, now again, let's try some of our own examples. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it, the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do it the way he did it in the example, and the next day, one I'm going to do, I'm going to do the way that we generally do it in class. I don't really mind how you do it as long as you understand what you're doing. So what he did was he said, okay, fine, let's distribute this x over the whole of that bracket. So it becomes x times by x squared plus 2x plus 3 plus 1 times by x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay, so then x times x squared is x cubed, then plus 2x squared plus 3x, and then it becomes plus x squared, I'm just going to change that to make it look like a plus, plus 2x plus 3, because 1 times anything is a thing. And now we just need to add the like terms. And you can see you've got 2x squared here, and x squared here, and you've got 3x, and you've got 2x. So it becomes x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay, not too difficult, right? Now let's do another one. And what I want to do this time is I want to do it the way that we normally do it in class, which is using the same principle, but it might just be, I just want you to have exposure to both, and then you can decide which is better for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first with the first. So 3x times by 2x squared becomes 6x cubed. Then next becomes plus 12 x squared y and then the 3 x times by the last one becomes minus 3 x y squared and now that we've finished with the first term we're going to multiply the next one so it becomes and now I want you to be careful I want you to put a plus and because it's a minus I want you to just do it separately so it becomes minus y times by 2 x squared becomes minus 2 x squared y then minus times a plus becomes minus 4xy squared. And then a minus times a minus is a plus, so it becomes plus y cubed. You don't have to do this, but I find that sometimes students forget about that minus, and by putting that bracket in it, it forces them to look at it, look at the number, the, the sign in front of the y, and realize that is part of the y, and then multiply through. So let's carry on. That becomes 6x cubed 
plus 12x squared y minus 3xy squared and then we're just going to get rid of this so it becomes minus 2x squared y plus times the minus is minus 4xy squared and then plus y cubed and now we look for like terms we've got a x squared y here and a x squared y here and we've got an xy squared and an xy squared so it becomes 6x cubed plus 12x squared y minus 2x squared y becomes plus 10x squared y because we're just taking 12 minus 2 minus 3xy squared minus 4 which becomes minus 7 xy squared and then plus y cubed. So now you've seen both ways that we can do it. Let's do a last example just to make sure. In fact I'm going to give you a little bit of time. What I would suggest you do is stop the um, video right now and try and do it by yourself and then watch how I do it after that. I don't mind which way you'd prefer to do it um, as long as you get it right. Okay, now let's see if you manage to get that right. So I'm going to again use the second method. So we're going to go first with first. So it becomes 3x, I'm going to do it a little bit more slowly this time just to make sure you're getting it right, times by 9x squared, right? Plus 3x times by the next one, which is going to be minus 6xy plus the last one so it's going to be 3x times by 4y squared and then because it's a little bit longer I'm going to go on to the next line plus in this case it's going to be 2y times by 9x squared plus 2y times by minus 6xy plus 2y times by 4y squared. Right, so now let's multiply that. 3 times 9 is 27 and x times x squared is x cubed. Plus times a minus gives you a minus. 3 times 6 is 18, so it's 18x squared y. Plus 3 times 4 is 12 and then it's xy squared plus 2 times 9 is 18 x squared y a plus times a minus is minus 2 times 6 is 12 so it becomes 12 x y squared and then finally plus 2 times 4 is 8 y cubed and again we now need to look for our like terms so we've got x squared y here and x squared y and it's so cool because it's minus 18x squared y and plus 18x squared y so they cancel and we've got plus 12xy squared minus 12xy squared so that also cancels and you're left with 27x cubed plus 8y cubed which is actually the sum of two cubes, but we will learn about that later again. Right, grade 10s, I hope that you now understand how to multiply monomials with binomials, binomials with binomials, and binomials with trinomials, and you know the laws, so it doesn't matter how long those brackets are, you are able to do this. Please practice lots of examples, and make sure you do the assessment at the end of the section to ensure that you understand the work we've done. Thanks, have a wonderful day.